year is 1896. The inhabitants of Walla Walla were all excited about the new street lights downtown. Some of the more upscale homes even had electric lights inside. So let's gather round and read this edition of the Walla Walla Gazette newspaper. Today's date is September 26, 1896. Moore and Kelly, the proprietors of the State Hotel, have been making many improvements in their popular hostelry during the last few weeks. They now have 47 rooms from which guests may make selections. The furnishing of some of these rooms has cost as much as $200. The State Dining Room will accommodate 42 people at one time. Whitman College of Fire the Park Street Fire Bell attracted crowds to the eastern end of the city Friday afternoon. A student from Whitman College, Smith of Fort Walla Walla, by wheel brought the news to the engine house that the college building was on fire. The chemical was on his way in 18 seconds after the alarm was turned in. When it reached the college building, the entire upper portion of the roof was in flames on the inside the fire having gotten considerable headway before it was discovered. The flames were extinguished before the steamer had got a steam there on the roof. As there was very little water used inside the building, the damage to the plaster was slight, but the middle portion of the roof is considerably scorched and burned out. Treasurer Elliot informed a Gazette reporter that the building is fully insured and the companies would likely repair the damage. Crowds that viewed this fire went away praising the chemical engine. Its superiority over the steamer was probably better demonstrated in this fire than in any that has occurred since the new extinguisher was put into service. Many remarked that it had paid it for itself already, and there is scarcely any doubt but that the statement is true. A Grand Wedding there was a brilliant wedding at the residence of Mrs. M. F. Green last Thursday evening when her daughter, Miss Felinda Green, was united in marriage to Mr. John W. Langdon. The impressive marriage ceremony was conducted by Rev. Francis L. Palmer of the St. Paul's Episcopal Church. The bride was given away by ex-governor Miles C. Moore. Mr. William Sterling acted as the best man and Miss Langdon was maid of honor. Miss Rose Baker caught the bride's bouquet, which was thrown from the top of the stairs. Battery table lamp, $2.75. Electric necktie light. The Edison dollar motor. Bicycle lights, $2.50. The four leading electric novelties. Dillman's Cave, one of the plutonic wonders of Central Oregon, pictured for Gazette readers. This cave is situated in Crook County, Oregon, near the Big Meadows on Deschutes River, about five miles northwest of Lava Post Office and 45 miles southwest of Prineville. The general character of the surrounding country is a volcanic formation. The lava beds and the soil are of volcanic ash, or as we call it here, pumice. It was discovered by a resident of this neighborhood in the 80s, James Dillman. He partially explored it, but not until July 95 was it thoroughly explored when Joel Allen, James Dillman, George Selden, and myself went to the end of it. We climbed down for about 50 feet over the broken rocks that have fallen in and early in the season find ice and water among the great black boulders that cover the bottom. For 200 or 300 yards it is very rough as much of the ceiling and walls have fallen in. It is no picnic to climb over huge craggy ragged lava boulders and at the same time carrying a pitch torch or perhaps a bundle of torchwood as supply fuel and dark 
passing through a narrow place, we soon come to where the floor is covered with sand and just the finest sand you ever saw. The grains are so regular that they look as if they had been run through a fine sieve. The sands have filled up the crevice up to this point until we can go no further. However, Mr. Dillman, the discoverer, says that when he was first in the cave, he was able to penetrate the earth to a greater distance than is possible now. Not until his exploration with us had the end been reached. It is possible that wind, for there is a strong draught through the cave, and water are combining to shorten the aperture. James Pelton A surprise party was given Miss May Yeend on Saturday evening last at the residence of Mrs. Anna Yeend of the city in honor of her birthday anniversary. A large number of friends from Valley Grove as well as from the city and vicinity were present and a very enjoyable time was had. Miss Yeend received many handsome presents, among them a nice ring. Of course, that doesn't signify anything as she is yet in her teens. After the young men had given vent to the rhetorical imaginations in wishing her a long and happy life, the guests departed, each feeling better for having participated in the pleasures of the evening. A Broken Shoulder Frederick Lux, a well-known farmer living four miles west of town, was thrown from a horse last Tuesday evening which resulted in a broken shoulder. The unfortunate man was brought into town the next day and placed in the hospital where medical assistance was quickly secured. The shoulder was found to be badly broken and it will be some time before Mr. Lux will be able to use his arm again. Doctor to male patient, are you troubled with cold feet? Male patient, not now, she is off visiting her mother. Clearance sale of wheels, during the next 30 days, we will sell 35 second-hand wheels at fabulously low prices. These wheels must go to give room for next season's stock. If you want a bicycle at poor own price, now is the time to get it. F.T. Merrill Cycling Company. J.W. McKee, Manager, 3rd Street between Main and Alder.